This video was a special request by Jurgen Blob. Thank you so much for supporting me. Outer Space The general public has been obsessed with it ever since we landed on the moon back in 1969. Growing up, there was always a number of questions in regards to that big yellow circle in the sky. Who was the man in the moon? Was the moon really made of cheese? What if we were able to live on the moon and drive our cars on there? In 1982, we were finally able to drive our car on the moon thanks to a little game called Moon Patrol. What innovative feature did this game introduce that is still being used today? So strap yourself in and watch out for the craters because this is the history of Moon Patrol. The year is 1982 and Takahashi Nishiyama had just started his new job at IREM. He wrote up a quick design document and handed it in to his bosses. His bosses were so impressed he was put in charge of game development. Drawing on his fascination with outer space themes and especially the moon, he set out to create the masterpiece we all know as Moon Patrol. Since this was going to be IREM's first arcade game, Mr. Nishiyama wanted to make it visually appealing and also offer something new in terms of gameplay. He came up with and implemented the very first use of parallax scrolling in an arcade game. For those of you who don't know, parallax scrolling is when the background graphics scroll at a different speed than the foreground graphics creating a sense of depth. Take a look at Shadow of the Beast on the Amiga 500 as a prime example of this. He envisioned a side-scrolling game where not only do you have to jump over the giant moon craters, but also shoot obstacles in your path. Moon Patrol was released in 1982. It was developed by IRIM of Japan and distributed by Williams here in America. The game sees you piloting a moon buggy who is defending the surface from the onslaught of alien invaders. Your vehicle has a couple of different abilities. The first one is the ability to jump over craters and other obstacles. The other is a forward facing cannon which also fires upright at the same time, allowing you to take out the incoming UFOs. Certain UFOs not only drop missiles, but also bombs directly in front of you that will make a giant crater that you have to jump over. On certain levels, you will go up a steep incline and boulders will roll down the hill toward you which you either have to jump over or shoot. Something else you have to avoid which is scattered all over the moon surface are the mines. One touch and it's adios for you and your car. Something else to mention, when flying over certain large craters, plants at the bottom will reach up and try to grab your buggy as it flies over. The game is set across five stages with various checkpoints based on the alphabet. The checkpoints not only mark the player's progress, but also the restart point if your buggy is destroyed. At the end of each stage, you are graded and the faster you are going through the level, the more bonus points you get. After you complete the initial course, a championship course opens up and the game loops endlessly beyond that. It's essentially a score attack with a very unusual scoring feature. You are allowed to continue if you lose all of your buggies, but your score doesn't reset. This means that the kid with the deepest pockets could potentially get the highest score. The game also featured fantastic music which still rattles around in my brain to this very day. At the top of the screen, you'll notice three indicator lights to warn you of danger. When the top light flashes, it means enemy saucers are flying in. The middle light indicates there are minefields ahead, and the bottom light means there are enemies behind you. Moon Patrol has the perfect blend of graphics, music, and playability. There is a problem though, that suffers from the three minute syndrome. Arcade owners at the time had an unwritten rule. They didn't want the player lasting longer than three minutes on a single credit. 
So what they would do is, they would either add a boss or increase the difficulty. And that's exactly what happens here. The gameplay is a lot of fun, but it just gets way too hard, way too fast. That's what she said. <laughs> this was not to be Mr. Nishiyama's only arcade hit. He followed this one up with another smash hit, Kung Fu Master. He would later leave Irem and join Capcom, where he would go on to help co-develop the very first Street Fighter game. A few years later, he would join SNK where he created Fatal Fury and also worked on the Art of Fighting series as well as the King of Fighters. Finally, he helped develop the Metal Slug series. The game was a massive success and with it brought a ton of conversions. There were also a lot of clones available, but we're not looking at those. Only officially licensed conversions are eligible. Before we get started, let's take a look at another classic video game commercial. They love it on Nebula. They're wild about it on Torinus. Even on Motus, where they don't like anything at all, they eat it up. It's Atari's Moon Patrol, the action-packed video game. Brace your moon buggy over enormous craters. Blast attacking saucers. And zap moon rocks. But you'd better watch out. Play Moon Patrol. It's more fun than a barrel of growth mix. You from Atari. The first port we are looking at is the Atari 2600 version. A lot of these old conversions were done by Atari themselves under their Atari Soft label. Upon first glance, this is reminiscent of the arcade game. They even managed to put in the parallax scrolling background. The only problem graphically I can see is that your car looks like a beetle crawling along the ground. The sound effects and music are good with a nice rendition of the arcade jingle playing in the background. If the sound effects and music are not to your liking, you can always adjust the switches to disable the sound to make it really feel like you're on the moon. Or like everybody else with a brain, you can just turn the volume down on the TV. So how does it play? Considering the arcade game uses two buttons and this one only has one, the game still plays fantastic. Next up is the Apple II version. While the little system tries its darndest, it just can't get the job done. Let's start by talking about the sound and music, if you can call it that. I think there's a version of the background music playing, but it's hard for me to tell. The sound effects are extremely annoying with a loud whistle every time you fire. As you can see, the graphics are terrible. The colors are horrible and there is a lot of flicker on your moon buggy. The speed of the gameplay is also a bit too slow, but at least they implemented the parallax scrolling. The Commodore VIC-20 version is up next and I really wish it wasn't. The graphics are large and blocky with very little animation. The backgrounds are very sparse, making it seem like you are in the negative zone. The music is okay, but the sound your buggy makes reminds me of a choo-choo train chugging along. The speed of the game tends to slow down when there's a lot of action on the screen. No sir, I would not recommend this version. The Atari 5200 version is really well done. The very first thing you notice on this conversion are the excellent graphics. The parallax scrolling has been replicated and looks great. What doesn't look great is the actual moon buggy itself. For one, it only has four wheels instead of six, and for two, it has what looks like a giant drill sticking out of the front of it. The sound effects and music are very good with the same catchy theme playing in the background. Despite the horrible controllers, the game does play very well. The Atari 800 version is almost identical to this one. Ooh. 
Well, I thought we had scraped the bottom of the barrel with the VIC-20 version, but apparently not. If you would love to play a game with just green and orange colors, then this is the game for you. Since this is an early MS-DOS game, we are treated to some fantastic CGA 4 color graphics. But it doesn't end there. Your moon buggy looks like it was drawn by a five-year-old. There is also a whole lot of flicker going on. The sound effects are full of bloops and bleeps and sound just atrocious. There is a version of the theme song playing in the background, but it's so bad I shouldn't even mention it. I guess the gameplay is okay, and the speed is fairly consistent with the arcade original. Up next is the Spectrum version. If you are lucky enough to play this version, it will be just like you're watching the original moon landing back in 1969 in all of its black and white, slow and jerky glory. Now I've seen and played some slow games in my day, but this has got to take the cake. The colors are terrible. Your buggy is all black and the speed of the gameplay is about negative 5% of the original arcade speed. There is a primitive version of the arcade jingle, but that's not saying much. Okay, Patman, is there anything positive you can say about this game? Absolutely. It was never officially released. Despite the game being completed, Atari Soft were withdrawing from the software market and this was one of the games that was left on the table. It was found and released online a few years ago. The Commodore 64 version looks very good. The parallax scrolling is nice and smooth, probably the smoothest of any of the 8-bit home conversions. The sprites are large and detailed with some nice animation, especially on the wheels of your moon buggy. The city backdrop is missing for some reason, but what's there looks really good. The sound effects are nice and the music is really good thanks to the Commodore 64 SID chip. The speed of the gameplay is just as fast as the arcade original. Despite only having one fire button, the gameplay is top notch. Up next is the MSX version. In still shots, it doesn't look too bad. Yes, there is a definite lack of color going on, making everything appear as if you are at the North Pole, but everything else is nicely detailed. Once the game starts to move, you'll see the problem. Everything is slow and choppy. The last time I saw something this choppy, I was watching a Ginsu knife commercial. The speed is not as bad as the Spectrum version, but the jittery scrolling is absolutely terrible. We do get a decent rendition of the arcade theme and sound effects. At least the playability sort of makes up for it. The Texas Instruments version looks good, although the screen is a bit cramped. I don't know if this is because they put the scoring information at the bottom of the screen or what, but something just feels a bit off. The sprites are large, but they are blocky, and they don't have the greatest amount of detail. We do have music and sound effects, but the quality is not very good. The ColecoVision port is another game that was complete but did not chip out the door due to AtariSoft closing down. It's a shame this never got released back in the day because it's an excellent conversion despite a few odd design choices. The buggy itself, especially the wheels, are nicely animated. Matthew Householder, who was the programmer of the cartridge, did not like the look of the background so he redesigned them more to his liking. There is a great rendition of the theme song as well as excellent sound effects. The playability feels very good despite the fact there's only one fire button. Up next is the Atari ST version and it looks very close to the arcade game. Nice and vibrant colors along with large detailed sprites makes this one of the better Atari ST conversions. 
The scrolling and animation are very smooth, especially the backgrounds. The music and sound effects are pretty good, although they could have been better in my opinion. Playability feels good, just like the arcade game. Even the Game Boy Color received a version of Moon Patrol. The game was released as part of a two-pack under the Midway Presents Arcade Hits along with Spy Hunter. While the game is not arcade perfect, it's very close and does a really good job of replicating the arcade machine on the humble Game Boy Color. Sprites are nice and detailed and the animation is very smooth. The sound effects and music are only average at best, but they get the job done. At long last, we have separate buttons for jumping and firing, so we are finally able to play it just like in the arcade. Speed of the gameplay is very fast and feels just like the arcade original. In the year 2000, Midway released Midway's Greatest Arcade Hits Volume 2. This was a compilation of various arcade games and among them was a pixel perfect version of Moon Patrol. The game was running under emulation, so what you are getting is essentially the arcade game at home in terms of graphics, sounds, and playability. It was released for a multitude of platforms. And that wraps up the history of Moon Patrol. The game was very innovative for its time, both in terms of playability and also with graphics. This is one of those games that gets its hooks in you, and you always end up saying, let me just try one more time. Honestly, I think this is something that's been missing in modern games for quite some time. There are plenty of good conversions available, and especially the Midway Greatest Arcade Hit series, so if you ever get a chance to try this game out, make sure you do. You'll be glad you did. If you like my videos and want to support me on Patreon, please click the link below. Also, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my content. It's the only way my channel can grow. Thank you so much for watching.